and good day. My name is Quinn Avery, reporting for SL Aviation News. This planet of second life has roughly 140 times more surface area than that of the Earth. Its real life equivalent would be nearly the size of Neptune. And all across the face of this vast and open grid, the mappers of SL have looked high and low, near and far, and have brazened frostbite, heat stroke, thirst, sharks, scurvy, getting shot at, high risk of falling from dizzying heights, decompression illness, pirate cannonballs, to hunt down and manually ferret out approximately 350 places to res and fly a plane. Currently, in this world as we understand it, there are about 224 airports, approximately 22 military bases, 3 heliports, 22 exclusive search and rescue stations, 39 harbor seaport airport situations, 9 exclusive harbors, 3 plane racetracks, 1 helicopter racetrack, 2 exclusive dirigible terminals, two flyable ground-level spaceports, and zero new airports underwater. However, I find it totally fascinating the amount of reservable land that has grown in the last 10 years. And I would like to express gratitude to harbor masters, airport managers, estate owners in Second Life that, as a collective, have made choices with their land to spearhead this trend. They have walked the road less traveled by leaving their land parcels open. They take on a greater risk of griefing, but are willing to do so that an exchange of friendships can come and go in our lives. It is these landowners and managers that are the community unsung heroes that have the vision to break the ice and blaze a trail by example for others to follow to a future open mainland grid. We of the general aviation and marine communities sincerely wish to tip our hats and say thank you to all the wonderful people that own open land, airports, and share marinas with us in Second Life. One such timeless location is the charming little airport and marina at Akinfar, along the Blake Sea. Akinfar Airport was first established by the unified efforts of members of the SLAA New Akinfar Airport Group in coordination with Snake 111 Rudolph, Serena Lexington, and Gabriel Miller. Akinfar Airport has an ICAO code of SLAA and is a privately owned small civil aviation airport and small marina located along the rocky shoreline of eastern Nautilus that is open to the general aviation and marine communities with a 30-minute auto return. The ambience of Akinfar Airport is derived from a combination of modern San Diego naval shipyards and the jetties of Mission Bay, California. By having SL military surplus hardware airlifted into Akinfar, the managers have had fun creating an inspiring, uniquely beautiful, rustic-looking 90-year-old airport as it would be seen weathering away in the salt air today. Being a harbor island, it is subjected to high, high tides and gale-forced winds at times, which throw sand up onto the runway. A review of the highlights on the outdoor weather cam show a sampling of weather that can be encountered here. In general, Akinfar enjoys a Mediterranean climate that is subject to tropical storms during the summer with mild but chilly rainy winters. Akinfar Harbor is a natural multi-based and coastal region and the coastline is uniquely known for persistent seasonal fog. Airport facilities include 
Two World War II carbon arc aircraft searchlights on either end of the field that are being used instead of runway lights. A fuel depot, Landmaster game, and Akinfar is a cargo port for Get the Freight Out. Akinfar is a place the time forgot. There is a compacted seaplane ramp along the northern shore just behind the Akinfar jetty. On the southern end of the airstrip is Cafe Morina. This is a Cuban coffee shop for you to meet up with friends before heading out on a trip. And do try the exquisite gourmet food truck menu, just to say you've tried it once. Akinfar is an uncontrolled airstrip, meaning the radio tower is often unmanned. It is a single runway with a north-south approach that has no runway numbers. On the southern threshold are a set of installed 10-meter approach lights to help welcome guests into Akinfar. The runway pavement is made up of a composite of durable marine cement and locally acquired recycled blocks that would have gone into the local landfill. The runway skirting is marked with a running set of flashing edge lights that are mostly obscured by piles of drifting sand accumulating on the property by wind and wave action since the last big typhoon in 2008. Akinfar Airport accepts wingspans of up to 20 meters, including small jets, small propeller planes, helicopters, seaplanes, sea helicopters, dirigibles, gliders, ultralights, gyrocopters, parachute, parasailing, and flying saucers out of the port of Los Angeles, serving small and mid-sized craft. No TAM. Be advised that the runway is not lit at night. However, the airport will try to shine a spotlight on anything in the sky that moves. No TAM. Beware on approach. Airfield is common to have hidden hazards sitting on and near the runway in the form of old, rusky, basket case wrecks of boats and planes, and old, discarded, cracked, and pitted radial engine power plants that have been strung about and left to oxidize in the salt air and add a bit of mystique to the airstrip. Scrap is known to be drug around the property behind plane poles. As it decomposes, the metal hulks get in the way of new construction. Come on down and turn in a bid for a pallet of your very own little piece of Akinfar. Makes a great gift. The delightful Akinfar Marina itself is a shallow dog hole port named by schooner sailors for having only enough room to turn their boats around in as a dog has in a hole. Marina features include harbor mouth buoys, docks, three ferry boats, coastal sand flats, estuaries with seagulls, dolphins that are protected by the Akinfar Tidal Trust Wildlife Refuge, and year-round fishing, where the grunion run two times a year. These are the local NAVCOM frequencies in the area. At present, Akinfar Port has several small buildings set up on small outcroppings, and is split into two main areas, the airport marina and the SNR station. The Akinfar Port Authority has authorized the building up of maritime search and rescue infrastructure in the region, and the operations commenced under contract with SARAMS UK. The owner-operator is Sophie Redwood, CEO of SARAMS UK, who has credentials longer than my foreleg. SARAMS UK stands for Search and Rescue Emergency Medical Services United Kingdom, the Akinfar Sarums UK station is also home to a regional state-of-the-art, full-featured, modern medical care hospital that so far has saved a great many avatars' lives in SL. Facilities include elevated emergency hospital helipad, hyperbaric chamber, CAT scan, x-ray machine to help reset broken and deformed avatars, urgent care, critical care, 
surgery with beds enough for three pre-deceased survivors. And from the credentials on the wall, your avatar will be in good hands and on the road to recovery in no time. Just for the record, this hospital has never had a post-deceased survivor, so it continues to enjoy an outstanding track record. I bet they could even do veterinary in a pinch. Well, that's it for this edition. I'm Quinn Avery, signing off for SL Aviation News, and we'll be leaving the lights on for you.